What we're going to look at here are the ideas of price controls. There are two different kinds of controls that government can enact on prices. They can make a price ceiling, which is a law that prevents a price from rising above a certain level. Think of your ceiling above you. Can you get above that ceiling in the room that you're in? No. If you do, you're not in that room anymore, right? There you go. Or they can have a price floor, which prevents a price from falling below a certain level. Again, think of the room you're in. What does that floor prevent you from doing? Falling down to the floor beneath you. So ceilings are caps, floors are bottoms. Now price ceilings and price floors can create an equilibrium in markets. Let's first, for example, take a look at a classic case of a price ceiling, and that'll be apartment rents in places like New York City. Citizens get together, they say, the rent is too damn high. And then they go and they start talking to their legislators and they say, hey legislators, you know, um, if you want our vote, you're going to have to do something for us. And that's going to be keeping our rent lower. If you keep our rent lower, we're going to go ahead and vote for you in the future. So the legislator says, okay, I like votes. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to enact a price ceiling on apartment rent. Here's the problem though. What happens when that price ceiling is set below equilibrium? If our price ceiling is set below equilibrium, that's going to lead to a greater quantity demanded than being supplied at that price. If there's a greater quantity demanded than there is quantity supplied, we have a shortage. What that means is that there are people willing to rent an apartment at this price that can't. And they can't because there's a price ceiling in place and legally landlords are not able to charge a higher price for rent. That means that these landlords aren't willing to supply all of the apartments that may be available. They're going to try to find other things to do with them to make money off them and if they can't they may just board them up and abandon them not let anybody live in them. Is this good to happen in a market? Not necessarily. Remember a market exists to try to bring balance to itself. It wants everybody who wants a good at a specific price to be able to get it at a specific price. It wants to reach equilibrium. This price ceiling makes it so equilibrium cannot be reached. A price floor that exists is alcohol sales. And do most state laws make it illegal to sell alcohol for lower than a specific price? You can't just give it away, if you will. So if a price floor exists in the alcohol market, then it's going to have to exist above equilibrium price if it's going to do anything to our market. If a price floor exists above equilibrium price, that means the price can't move down far enough to get to equilibrium. And if that's the case, we are going to have a greater quantity of alcohol being supplied than is being demanded at that price. When this happens, we have a surplus. Firms don't like surpluses generally because that's product that's not being sold. It's sitting there. And therefore, they're not getting a profit off of that product. Consumers end up being worse off here especially because the price is higher than what they're willing to pay for alcohol. That means with all the extra alcohol laying around, it ends up getting skunky if it's beer. Bummer, right? No good. But not everybody who wants to purchase and consume the alcohol at this time can. So they're made a little bit worse off. The market is inefficient because it's not able to get to equilibrium.